take to second John the elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in truth and not I only but also all they that have known the truth for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us shall be with us forever we pick up in verse 2 our 14th study we look at now for the truth's sake truth is the melody in this epistle truth appears four times and truth as a possession turns up one time motive is truth where do you find this motive in a used car salesman or in a lawyer but in every Christian our our main determination our motive is should always be the truth truth is the word truth is Jesus Christ truth is God and truth is the Holy Spirit and a Christian that does not perform the truth that does not apply the truth you're gonna call you're gonna make one call into the conclusion of what who you are I recollect something with Superman comics something about the truth in a make-believe person that is a lie well that's where Christians walk they walk in that middle of the road the Bible says in Revelation 3 uh, 15 and 16 they're lukewarm they lie and then they proclaim to be a Christian of Jesus Christ who's the truth there was a time in man's history there was always the truth you might say when was that it was before the fall of Genesis 3 before Genesis 3 man was capable of never lying he was like God the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ who cannot will not and is impossible to tell a lie after the fall man lied and has been lying ever since it was her doing it well yes but that's not the whole truth. You were there too, Adam. You could have stopped it, Adam. And for her, it was the serpent's doing. Well, yeah, but you took part also. Had he had someone to blame, he would have passed the buck on too. But it's amazing how it stopped at the serpent. If you run to John 8, 44, and you find out who that serpent is the liar the father of lies no one wants to owe up for the truth I watched a funny video yesterday on YouTube that one of my friends had put up on Facebook a guy who in a mobile home dragged his car behind he didn't want to owe up to the truth that it was not in neutral I'm just going down the road and just drove off ruining his vehicle all he had to do is open up the door and say oh yeah I made a mistake and pop the thing in neutral but all the cost in this that that guy is going to want when he wants to start the car and won't be able to drive off, I guarantee. Not after six miles of driving it in uh, transmission in park and dragging it down the road where you saw both tire marks from the rear wheels. The truth was, you made a mistake. And you made it a costly mistake. Honesty, there would be no reason to doubt. You realize the jokes of sales, used car salesmen and lawyers? Because most, not all, but most of them will not tell the truth. And they are a front for jokes. 
politicians. Where do you find a hundred honest politicians? In a cemetery. Dead. Jokes. The dominant theme of existence of a Christian is to be Christ-like. And how many, being December 13, uh, 2013, how many churches are now celebrating Christmas and not telling their congregation the truth? That it is a big lie. Lying to the people from the pulpit about heresies, about traditions, about teachings that are not so in the Bible, never said to be so. To be Christ-like is to be honest 100% of the time. If you dare to call yourself a Christian and lie, you are not Christ-like. The focus subject is the truth. God is all truth. And Satan is all lie. And man walks the middle line. Christians walk in the truth and they walk in lies. Are we capable of con continuously being in truthful or being truthful? Is it conceivable that me, as a born-again Christian, that I can always tell the truth? Well, doesn't the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, indwell in us, in me? Don't I proclaim that the Holy Spirit lives in my heart? And the answer is yes. Because our Father is all truth. The Holy Spirit is the Father, and the Father is the Holy Spirit. And we are told to be like Christ, who is the truth. And the answer is yes. We can be absolutely honest all the time. When you are honest, you do not need a memory. If you're going to stand out in a lie, you need memory. I'll tell you why in a minute. But truth builds character, and the flesh hates it. You know what the flesh hates? It's when you've done something wrong to somebody. And you walk up to that person and you omit your fault. You've degraded the, the flesh. The truth is a shovel that buries the old man. Paul said, I die daily. And dishonesty is one of them everyday trials. Everyone, every saved Christian deals with dishonesty. The moment in their life that when they have the capability, the, the time to say the truth or say a lie. Even in a lie, if no one knows about it, it will never be found out. Yet, bet the Holy Spirit is inside you. God knows. And Jesus Christ's blood paid the price for it. For 1 John 1, 9. You are to apply the blood of Christ as you confess your sins to God through the blood of Christ. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the evil and the good It is a lie that cannot be hid from God. It's a lie that has been recorded as with all your sins that you do. I said that a memory is needed to lie. 
No memory is needed for the truth. If I speak the truth and later on down the road you ask me and I tell the truth again, what do I need to know? But if I tell you a lie, you or I have to recollect what you lied about. And that's where the law will find you out. Even in medical field. Asking you a question at one point in time, you give an answer. Asking a second question later on. And you give an answer that didn't match the first one. See, time will reveal who you are if you don't have a memory. Have you ever dealt with somebody and the second, third time around, the story did not match? Possibility, there's a lie. You have to recall what you said. And since what you said did not occur, you better have a memory of what you told and what you said. You will have to apply a lie, another lie for the lie that you lied. Christian, don't you realize once you tell one lie, you're going to have to have another lie to back up that lie, and that makes two, and then another lie to back up the another lie to back up the lie, that makes three? There is no white little lies. There's no little polka dot little lies. You tell your children that there's a tooth fairy. That's a lie. Putting the money under the pillow. That's another lie. Then proclaiming to the child at a certain age that, oh, it was just all in fun and all that. That makes you a liar in the eyes of the children. Your character has been broken. And then you wonder why the sweet little darlings don't look up to you no more. You lied to them. You lied to your boss. I'm not feeling well. I'm not coming in. I've got this. I've got that. Then you don't get the raises. You don't get the promotions. You don't get the respect from your boss. Because you are a liar. And be sure the Bible says your sins will find you out. Before a born again Christian, as our Father in heaven, that He is our Father, we're our children. The chastisement, the, the, the whipping that God may apply to us, maybe the fact is, you will be humbled before the person you lied, where the truth will come out. And that person rebuking you. You know, in the court of law, if you lie, it is a crime. You have perjured yourself. You have perjured the court. And in some cases, based upon your conduct, you may have to serve time in jail. Truthful answer, whereas natural to memory, it happened as so. If I tell you the truthful answer to something, I don't need to memorize because I've already got it in my memory. It's already built in there. It's, I've lived it. Now, I may not tell every single detail. I may forget you know, something was blue or there were three or four of them, but the story is going to be the same. As in the day I was saved in April 21st, 1987, I know there was a man named Joe Caswell. I believe that there was another man named Joe there and talking to that guy, he said, no. Or am I a liar? No, I was misunderstood, but I, there was two men there, I'm sure of one. There may be details forgotten, but the truth remains. 
The truth is faithful. If I tell you the truth today, tomorrow, you're going to have faith in me that, hey, he's never lied to me. And that's the kind of relationship you should have with your, your neighborhood. That's the kind of relationship you should have with your employer. That's the kind of relationship you should have in your church. And that is a relationship you should have in your family. Your house, I'm talking about. And then outside your family. Now, they may not like the truth. But they ought to know that you have character. You're standing up for the truth. You have not backed down and you're not lied. What is a lie? Take a wood plank. Go down to Lowell's, Home Depot, get yourself a, a wood, piece of wood, any size. Drive a nail into it. Now pull the nail out. That piece of wood, that wood plank is your character. That's who you are. You know the Bible likens a man to trees in the Bible? There was a man that Jesus was about to, to give him sight. And he says, what do you see? He says, I see men as walking as trees. Trees are used as illustration of certain people in the Bible, if not people. That wood is your character. The nail that you nailed into it was the lie that you told. Now you repented of your sin. You repented of the lie. You went to the person and said, hey, you got things worked out, but guess what? As you pulled the nail out of confessing the truth and telling and repenting, there is still a hole left behind. It is the doubt that you leave in your character. Now, yes, you can go down, back down to Lowell's or Home Depot, and you can get wood putty and fill that hole up. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all sin. God will forget that sin if it's under the blood. But when you're dealing with persons, when you're dealing with people, it's not easy forgotten. Even if they truly say, I forgive you, it's still there. It is a hole in your character. That the next time you call your boss, because I'm sick, he's going to think, well, last time, no. Well, I told my children the truth. There is no Santa Claus. And now I'm going to tell them about Jesus Christ. Well, Santa Claus was a lie. What makes you think that Jesus is? See? You've already lied to me once, and I see that hole. Now, the hole could be small, or it can be large. It can be just a nick. Or it can penetrate all through the plank, all the way through your character. But it's still not natural to that wood plank. It is not natural to your character. Christ's blood does wash away the lie, but to man the whole remains. And it's called doubt. And I don't care how forgiving a person may be. Your character will be in question at some point of your time, if not all. And that's just the truth of man. Thank God if you put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God forgets and forgives and washes it away. 
But the person that you lied to, the only way that that lie will be truly forgiven in your life is when that person dies or you die. You ever have, you just, whatever, whatever you're doing, day or night, you ever just have memory of somebody, something that's done something to you, and you forgot, you are forgiven, you forgot, and, and it's like, it's still there. And that's the problem. Peter lied three times. It, we call it, he denied Jesus Christ three times. But he lied to the people. I don't know this man. He even cussed. And he's kicking his toes in the sand by the fire. Yea, Lord, you know I love you. Three times. You know, Peter never, Peter never confessed that until that point. Why did Jesus Christ bring it up at the fire at the, at the beach side that day? Because it wasn't under the blood. That fire there represents your life at the judgment seat of Christ, Christian. And if it's not under the blood, there it is being judged. Name one time Jesus told a lie. Name one. That is recorded in the scriptures. Because if you come up with one, you're lying. Jesus never lied. And we are told to be like him. John 1.14 says, He was full of grace and truth. What do you are if you're full of truth? There's no lie. You, if you're full of truth, you can't fit a lie. It's false. He also said he is the way and what? The truth. Jesus telling the truth is our very salvation and our eternal security. You rest your soul, your security, your salvation in the fact that Jesus did not lie. And when you do doubt your security... Either there's two points. Either you ain't saved or you are calling God a liar. See, we rest on him, his telling us the truth, Jesus. But what about us to others? Are we faithful with the truth always? Well, you don't ever tell your wife she looks ugly in that dress. Going to lie? What? Well, we believe the King James Bible is the word of God out of the pulpit and behind the pulpit, it, you know. You know, you get people that go to church and on Sunday mornings, they're dressed up. They, their Halloween costume is, is Christianity. And on, outside the church, they're everything but. It's a lie. You know, Halloween's a lie. You are not that person in the mask. You are not that person dressed up. You are not the person in the, in the costume. Now, here is a very serious condition. And I did this report on, I don't have the date on this, but I'm going to kick some idols. And I'm not going to try to raise my voice in anger. But do you want the truth or do you want me to shut up? Would you like me to hit the stop record and hit the stop button and stop right now and not go any further and just let you go about your life happy as you can be? Or do you truly want to know what God wants from us? God wants us to tell the truth. 
And I'm here to tell you, you know, I'm sorry to say I've been a member of a lot of churches. I'm sorry to say that. And sometimes I plead the blood. But it always comes back to me that the churches I've been in, the, the pastors have been liars. They have been not faithful. And I've had to leave because of doctrinal issues. You can ask my wife and you can ask my children. So, do you want me to go further? Christian adults. I would say parents. But I'm going to lump all adults, Christian adults, in this. Here we are in verse 2, for the truth's sake. One, two, three, four, letter, four words. Telling the children. I would say, I would, until recently, I would have just said Christian parents, but this goes out to Christian Sunday school teachers, Christian bus ministry people, Christian working with children, Christian clubs for children, Christian meeting for children, Christian uh, voca uh, vacation Bible school for children, adults who are not parents. How about this? Number one, Christians telling their children there's a Santa Claus. The Tooth Fairy. Or the Easter Bunny. Well, I didn't hit you there? Good. Amen. I'm not done. How about saying Jesus died on Good Friday? Whereas an impossibility to get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. You got to twist the scripture to do that. I didn't hit you? Well, amen. Glory to God. The cross was a dogwood tree. Not touched? Amen. Three wise men? Well, there were three. Does the Bible say three men? Does it record? It records three gifts. But to say there were three wise men, we don't know. The manes are seen with both shepherds and the wise men present. Well, what's wrong with that, you may say? That's a lie. You know the wise men didn't show up to Jesus was about two years old? The shepherds showed up when he was born. After he was born. The manger scene is a lie. And then you have Joseph and Mary in purple. You know, with Mary bringing the turtle doves and the pigeons shows that she could not afford purple. Isn't a lie a lie? But it was for the kitties. It's all in fun. Well, explain that to Jesus Christ sitting in front of you at the judgment seat of Christ, Christian. Can you imagine the holy God, the one that died for you, the one that's going to have the nail prints on his hands and his feet and in his side, standing before you, calling over the angels of heaven as a witness and say, Gabriel, come here, listen to this. Gabriel's the one that went to Mary and told her about the, the, the prophecy that inside her womb she would, she would conceive and bear Jesus Christ. Can you imagine calling Gabriel, listen to this guy over here tell you that, they, that the wise men and the shepherds were together. And then having God call those angels that spoke to the shepherds and say, hey, did you guys know that the wise men showed up at the same time? 
As the word turns to Matthew, the word is Jesus Christ, John 1.1, 1, 1, and tells you, you are a liar. How about the spirit of Christmas, of course. How about you telling your children there's a Santa Claus as you watch Santa Claus in the spirit bow down before Jesus Christ and proclaim thou art the Savior, thou art Jesus, you are the Lord of God of all as Jesus tells Santa to depart from him into the lake of fire. Along with the Easter Bunny and all the fairies and goblins that you have put into your children's life. As all the world of Disney goes off into the lake of fire. There are no white lies. Polka dot lies. Black, purple, cross your fingers, stand on one's head. A lie is a lie from what foundation is a lie? Father God or Father Satan? Would your Heavenly Father lie to you? But you in turn rely to your children and even other Christians. That is not Christ-like. And you may hate me now, but you'll be sorry before Jesus Christ as he points his finger at you and says, I never lied. You have. Christ, I am nothing. When they called us Christians in Antioch, they were calling them because they acted like Christ. That means they would not have lied. When it comes to telling the truth, there was no Santa Claus, no fairies. It was all a lie. Do you know what? The same children will bring over the same lies you taught them even when you meant it was wrong. You brought them up that way. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. That child turned out because that's how you turned them out. That child is like a cake. You put the ingredients in him. Now he's out of the oven. Stop your complaining. As parents, you're the one that put the goods into the, in the oven. And what came out wasn't what God wanted. It's what you wanted. God told you how to make a cake. The Word, prayer, being in church, the husband, the father, guiding his family, studying for his family, the rod of correction, and driving the foolishness out of the child. Today, more adults believe in Santa than they believe in Jesus. If you don't believe me, go to a Baptist church on a Sunday morning. And then go to a mall or any store that's going to have Santa Claus there and see where the line is going to be. And in a church today, there is a lot of padded, comfortable pews. And they will be empty. There will be no line. I know. But for Santa Claus, there's only one seat, and that fat slob sits in it, as people stand in line waiting for hours to go sit on that fat guy's lap to tell him what you want instead of telling Jesus what you want. 
Jesus said, ask of my father, and you run to Father Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Here's the dilemma. Here's the dilemma. It comes time for your child to acquire about Jesus Christ. Whether you the parent or somebody who, who witnesses on the street and tells people about Jesus Christ, me, or my son will hand you a gospel track, or uh, any other born-again Bible-believing Christians that go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Okay? But, you see, they previously assumed in Santa, the bunny and the tooth fairy. Well, there were, they were lies. And they are. I probably got some adult who doesn't believe me now. He probably believes in Santa. But So why be certain of Jesus? He must be a lie also. For the other characters you taught them were also lies. Well, if Santa was a lie... If the bunny was a lie, if the fairy was a lie, now you're telling me about Jesus, he's got to be a lie too. Oh, no, 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 he's the truth. You, you, you swore that Santa was the truth. Well, yeah, he's a lie. But Jesus is the truth. So was Santa. Well, 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 well. Remember that piece of wood? And you know that piece of wood, when you that nail's a lie, you went there. Every single year, the hammer went more. It went more. And you may have told that child and pulled that nail out. But every year, that hole became bigger and bigger and bigger. And maybe even drove through the entire piece of wood. Your character. And now you speck them with that big hole. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I believed on Santa Claus and I was a good little child and he brought me all those presents. I've seen them every year. And now you're telling me he's a lie. And now you're going to tell me to believe in Jesus Christ who I cannot see, who I cannot feel, who I cannot touch until I get to heaven. That's a lie, mom. That's a lie, dad. So Jesus Christ turns out to be another oddity that you lied about. The way, the truth, and the life. You have made him a lie. And Jesus says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Woe unto them. It would be better if you hang a millstone about your neck and be cast off into the ocean or the, the sea and be drowned. Jesus Christ becomes another oddity that you lied about. And get this, Christian. Get this, Christian. Mother, father. As you watch Jesus Christ cast that child, your son or your daughter, into the lake of fire forever. Because it was more attractive... It was more thrilling to impart to them about people and things that were not factual. And when it came to giving them the truth, you already lied. And your lie damned your children's soul. We need to pause for a minute. And reflect what I just said. I'll give you a little altar call, Mom. 
and dad to truly repent and be realized the way you brought up your child because if you're a lie no matter how much you pray and how much you do your children may burn in hell because of a lie you're going to need to do some serious prayer and fasting and meanwhile your children may grow up and raise your grandchildren and your grandchildren may grow up to raise your great grandchildren and your great grandchildren may raise, grow up and raise your great great children if the Lord tarries in the same lies that you brought them up and not in the truth, the way, and the light. Didn't God say if you had idols over there in Revelation, uh, Exodus 20 that the third or fourth generation that hates him? God's, true, God's word is true. Even the Old Testament. Santa Claus and all that is not only a lie, it's an idol. And you may raise three or four generations of hell-bound sitters because you thought it was cute and funny. And I'm not only talking to you parents, I'm talking to you pastors out of the pulpit and your Sunday school teachers and your vacation Bible people and all the adults that raise the children. You think it's so funny and you think it's so cute as you watch those children get dive, nose dive, belly flop into the lake of fire for all eternity. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm all choked up. I just want to, I just want to scream out in tears. But there is hope because I was brought up in Santa Claus. I was brought up with toys and all that. And the Lord saved my soul. There is hope, but this day and age, I don't see it. Because you are getting it out of the pulpits. One lie ruins character. And that child, you shape them to doubt in your character as their parent or pastor. Remember the nail hole, the illustration above. You know those holes? When you see there, there's a hole, and if you see little sawdust in a pile, you got copper in your hand. You know what that means? You got more damage than you can see. That carpenter ant will go in one hole. And boy, he'll work himself in little tunnels inside that wood. In most cases, the wood will have to be replaced. You know your lies? God may have to take you home and put up another board in your place. Remember the nail hole illustration above. Doubt is one of the most destructive tools Satan has in his toolbox. Eve doubted the command of God. A wife that doubts of her husband working late, and when a preacher or church leader causes doubt in a Christian, one has to wonder, is he really working? They have to ponder, does the Bible really say that? They have to debate, is the two fairy really? They have to be perplexed. Is Jesus Christ the way, the truth? Or the quote pilot? What is truth? You said the, these were truth. But at this time you say they are not. That's doubt. What is truth? About truth, you'll want to check out yourself, John 14, 17, John 15, 26, John 16, 13. John speaks a lot about the truth. Romans 8, 9, and 1 Corinthians 3, 16. As we close out the second verse, for the truth's sake. And as I speak the truth to you, Paul tells the church, 
Have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? Some of you are going to hate me because of what I said today. Marvel not if the world hates you, Jesus said, for you know it hated me first. You know why the world hated Jesus? Because he put light upon him. It's like that cockroach. He don't want to see the light. He's going to run off. For they love darkness rather than the light, for their deeds are wicked. Truth is a serious Bible doctrine. And if you are a Christian, you are to be true. You're not to lie. Read John 8.44 while you're at it. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you.